what's going on guys welcome back to the channel i know i've been absent but i really haven't felt like recording no videos i, I really just been enjoying my fish but i'm gonna share some updates with you guys today in the fish room we got a ton of fish uh we still out here grinding we still importing fish and we are still making major moves in the fish game and the fish hobby because i'm a hobbyist before anything so let me turn this camera around and show you guys everything i got going on down here all right guys so let's start with the 300 the 300 is pretty bare let me take a step back it's pretty bare i mean i got nothing but just two stingrays in there uh the first two stingrays that i actually bought uh for a different aquarium these are the same two and then i've, I've had i had like three or four other stingrays but i end up selling those they were smaller than these guys so these are the OGs of the fish room right here in the 300 by itself. I still don't know what I'm going to do with the 300, but I'm just going to keep the stingrays in there. Uh, I might sell them. I might not. I don't know. It's not really a big deal. Let's go over here. I got this 20-gallon uh, uh, system over here. It's uh, 12 20 gallons. So let's start up here at the top. I got some polar parrots in here. These are just the babies. I'll show you guys the parents, but the, the parents, uh, I don't know. They have albinos and they have the, the regular polar blues. So I got some babies of those. That's one of the little albinos right there. And then they go to the regular polar blues, another albino. These guys are getting big. I don't know what I'm going to do with them. I guess I'm just going to keep breeding them, I guess. I don't know. Over here, we still got our pair of discus looking good, as always. I moved them into this 20-gallon, try to get some babies out of them. I think I'm going to try to take the uh, discus breeding more serious. It's not really a big deal to me. I have had one batch successfully hatch and I sold, so I might get back on that. Uh, this tank here, we got some ruby green uh, African cichlids in here. I sold all the parents and I just kept these right here. And I didn't take time to clean the tanks because this is just, this is, this is life. It's natural and this is just how things are, man. I got a ton of tanks down here, and I can't always keep everything clean, especially the bare bottom tanks. But those guys are looking good. They're growing pretty good. Down here on the bottom, which I don't have a light down here, so it might be kind of hard to see. But right here we got some red Texas cichlids right here. They haven't faded yet, but they will eventually start fading. As you can see, the red on there already popping. This one right here is actually uh, starting to fade, though. That one is, if you can see that. Then in the back, we got it's a couple African cichlids back there, some fryer eyes, a uh, little baby zebra oblique one right there. And then we got a bunch of Cynodonis cats in there, too. All right, guys. So I had to come to the side, give you all a little side view. But there's a bunch of Cynodonis cats in there. Uh, just babies. Feather fin Cynodonis cats. I got those guys in there. They're doing real good. Then over here in this tank, which is another tank on the bottom, we got some red Jacob Peacock cichlids. Just some babies that I'm growing out. I'll show you guys uh, the... I'll show you guys the dad, and I'll show you guys the mom, too. The mom is not, she's not impressive, but I'll show you guys anyway. Okay, so that was this side over here. Now, let's take a look over here on this side. Start up here. 
I got some, just a bunch of baby mollies and platties and guppies. And I even threw in some baby African cichlids, which I'm pretty sure you guys uh, won't be able to see them. Just because they're so small. But in this tank, we got our blood red sword tails. There is the mom up there. She is nice and fat, ready to go again. And we got a bunch of babies in there already. They're about 30 days old. So this tank is just, there's the other one right here. Another female. This one right here had the messed up mouth. If you guys can remember from months, from a, some months back, I never sold her just because her mouth was messed up, and I didn't want to sell anybody an imperfect fish. But this tank is just full of guppy grass. I, I, I'm actually finally glad to say that I can grow plants. <laughs> Not every plant, but as you guys can see, the guppy grass in there is thick. Give y'all a little side view if you can see that. Guppy grass is thick and it started off from hardly nothing. And the dad is back there in that corner. He just hanging out. He usually be harassing. He usually harasses her, but she is up in the brush. She might be ready to lay or anything. I'm not sure yet, but whenever she's ready, she will. Over here in this tank, we got some Williams and Blue Lips, which I had some of these in, the, I don't know, months ago. I, it's been so long since I recorded. I've just been breeding and growing fish up and just, that's pretty much all. But I sold the parents to these and I kept all the babies. That's kind of what I do. I just It's just like a repetitive cycle. I breed the fish. I sell the parents. I keep the babies. I raise them up. They breed again and just the same process. All right, so down here in the bottom, guys, it's hard to see, so I'm not even going to uh, take the camera down there. But we got yellow labs in this tank, and we got uh, red zebras in this tank right here. You might be able to see the red zebras a little bit. But that's what we got going on down there. This tank right here, it's just some male guppies in there, some... Um, what are these guys? Tuxedo koi, just all males, no females. So I don't know what I'm going to do with these guys. I'll probably end up giving them away because it's kind of hard to sell a male guppy without the female. Most people want a pair or a trio of them. So I'll just hold on to them or end up giving them away to somebody. Over here in the 125, guys, we got... Severums still got the red shoulder Severums. If you guys can see red shoulder Severums right here, and then we got the Rarus right there. This is a Raru. These guys are looking good. I brought these guys in, I don't know, maybe 30 days ago or so, something like that. But they have grown tremendously since I got them. I stay pumping them full of food. Everybody's looking good. The Severums even start growing since I put them in this uh, 125. But, <clears throat> excuse me, but I do need to move these guys into a smaller tank, actually. I know it might sound bad, but these guys are in a 125 right now. But they need to be moved into the 75 gallon, which I'll show you guys what's in there in just a second. But before we go over there, I want to show you guys the newest addition <laughs> to the fish room, which is this right here is a rack that I built, and I got snakes, which that's another one of my passions, and I just want to give you guys a little quick run through with the snakes, show you guys that. I don't know why I had these in there. It's just... It was really just there for no reason because it's not like they can get out. But there's my girl right there. 
looking good. She was probably about to take her a good drink of water. She's a good girl. Beautiful. She looked like she wanted to strike, but trust me, she is very docile. And these guys are amazing animals. There's my boy right there. Just give y'all a quick little look at look at these snakes. Let's see if I can get him to move a little bit. Give him a little motivation. Beautiful animal. Go back there on the heat pad. Rest a little bit. That's my male. Down here. I'm going to save that one for last. Right here. And this one, this girl right here is in shit. Let's see if I can get her out. This girl is in shed right here. She is a beauty. But right now she is in shed. As you guys can see her. Beautiful girl. I won't startle her too much because she's in shed. So we'll let her rest. Last but not least, that was a girl down there at the bottom. I got two girls, two boys. Last but not least, this is probably my favorite right here. This is my boy. Big boy. Beautiful. A beautiful boy. A beautiful specimen. As you guys can see, we got the new additions down here. We're going to be doing something in the future with them. I'm pretty sure somebody that watches this channel that's into snakes, ball pythons. So I just wanted to give you guys a little shot of that. Now, let's get back into the fish. We'll talk about the ball pythons later because I got something I really need to say and it needs to be said. But. For now, let's look at the African cichlids over here. Let me turn this light off. Uh, I had to turn that light off over there because it was just too much of a glare. But we got, as you guys can look at that. We got the Venusas in here. And we got our zebra oblique ones in here. Just amazing. Look at the colors on them. Just amazing. This is crazy. I actually had somebody come by today and uh, buy some of these, which I really didn't want to sell them, but, you know, sometimes the money talks. So I ended up getting rid of some, and I had a ton, a ton, I mean a ton of zebra oblique one babies, and I got rid of them. They were a couple weeks old, some like 30 days old, but. Got rid of those guys. They got a good home. Um, and, yeah, those are the African cichlids over here. We got some more African cichlids over here in this 125. Since I added these 10 gallons in here in the middle of the room, it's kind of hard to record the whole tank. But, and I know it's a glare, too. So, let me turn this light off. All right, so I had to turn the light off on a couple tanks to really give y'all a good look at these guys. Look at that sulfur head. We got sulfur heads in here. Let's see. Sulfur heads right here. I don't know if I can. It's kind of hard to get them on camera. But these guys are sulfur heads. And then we got this guy right here is a fryer eye. And then we got this guy right here going towards the back. That's a Taiwan Reef. Those guys look really good. 
that's the Taiwan Reef right there, male. And then the parents, well, the, the male to those red peacocks are, is this guy right here. Either that guy or that guy right there, but I'm pretty sure it's this guy because he's the, he's the most dominant one. So we got four different types of African cichlids in this tank. And I had these guys since they were a half inch. I took them to the swap. Nobody wanted to buy them. They were like, oh, they're too small. They're too small. So I pretty much took them off the market. Nobody can buy them. I don't care what, how much money you got. You can't buy these because nobody wanted to buy them when they were small. Now they look this great. Of course, everybody wants to buy them, but I'm not selling them. So look at how fluorescent they are. They just popping. If I do sell them, when I do decide to sell them, because eventually I will, but when I decide to sell them, I'll let everybody know. Look at that boy right there. So for head fired up. And I got probably... I don't know. I got probably 10 females in here holding. And I'll show you guys the babies to those. But down here, this is a 75 gallon. I was <clears throat> talking about moving the, the raw roots and the red shoulder severance too. We got some lemon Oscars in here looking real good. These guys are putting on some good size. Um, I had these guys for maybe about a month or so now, and these guys are really doing good. They came in kind of skinny, which, you know, that's that's just how the, the, the game goes when you import fish. All the fish are not going to always come in fat, super healthy. Sometimes you have to put some work in and, you know, get them back to where they need to be. But... We got the lemon Oscars in here, and like I said, I'm going to probably, I'll do another video. We'll move the Oscars in the, the next video, and we'll move the Rarus and the Severums in the next video. Over here, we got this 20 long right here. And as you guys can see, I'm really growing plants, guys. Like, I'm not playing around. I'm really growing plants. <laughs> I got all this guppy grass in here. Let me step back a little bit. So I got all that guppy grass in there. I got this light right here on top, which is a Walmart light, a plant light. I bought that light. I don't know, probably like four months ago, I bought that light and put it on this tank. And now we got good plants growing. So I'm actually going to trim down all this guppy grass because as you guys can see, it's getting out of control. But we got a pair of Krabinsies in here. That is the dad right there. And there goes the mom. That's the mom. She is real feisty too. But they got some babies in here. I don't even know if the camera can even pick them up because they're so small. But they just had those. Them guys are like maybe a week old maybe. Maybe four or five days old. Probably like four or five days old. Baby Krabinsies. We go down here to this 20 gallon. I got a 20 gallon down there, but there's nothing in that tank. <clears throat> I'm actually shutting that down just because it's so low to the ground. But in here we got a bunch of baby plecos and some baby crebenses, which is their first batch. As you guys can see, these guys are a lot bigger for crebenses. Then we got a bunch of plecos in there. We got some regular brown bristle nose. We got some albinos, and we got some calicos in there. There's a lot of them in there. I'm, I don't know how well the camera is picking it up, but there is a lot. We'll do a better, uh, we'll do an update video on all the, on all these fish so you guys can really uh, see what's going on with those guys. But it's probably at least 200 plecos in there then in this 30 gallon over here we got some red tears that i've been growing out since forever and these guys 
are growing so slow. It's kind of ridiculous. But these guys right here was, they got stuck like under the rock or something. It was weird because I had to, I started counting them. I'm like, oh no, my fish are missing. So I had to move the rock. They were stuck underneath the rock. And yeah, as you can see, their fins are all messed up and stuff. But this guy, he ain't going to come out. But there's a big guy under there. If you guys can see him, he's coming up now. And I still got my female reds here, so I'm basically trying to breed him back to her to try and get some more baby red tears. All right, guys, so over here we got the 55 gallon. It's looking real good. We got Nicaraguan cichlids in here. And then we got, I just, every time my African cichlid females, because I, I don't really know how to sex the African cichlids. I'm not a professional or anything. So every time my females are holding, I just take them out, which I know what they are. Like this right here, this is a fryer eye female. Then this right here is a sulfur head female. Sulfur head, that's a red. Uh, Jacob Peacock. But every time my females are holding, I'll, I'll strip them, and then I'll take the females, and I'll put the females over here in this tank with the Nicaraguans. Just because this tank is so mellow, and these fish are like so not aggressive. It's like a perfect setting. Nobody's dying. As you can see, we got little baby fish in there along with the big fish. So this is just like a, I don't know, the Nicaraguans are like a perfect fish for a, a docile setup. Like these guys are really, really looking good. Look at that male right there. Beautiful. Beautiful male. So we got the Nicaraguans in there. All right, guys, so over here we got the 55, uh, we got the 55 gallon, we got the uh, electric blue cars in here. I've been growing these guys out for, I don't know, quite some time, I can tell you that. I put a lot of work into these guys. If you guys look at them real close, most, if, if you're a fish person, most of the time, electric blue cars have like a sunken belly, which none of these really have like a sunken belly. But it takes a lot to get these guys to that perfect shape. Like this guy right here, this one right here, all of them. They all have like that perfect round belly that, you know, that, that you really want in your fish. You don't want your fish to have a sunken belly. No matter what kind of fish it is. Even though these guys are notorious for having sunken bellies, even though you feed them, they're still notorious for having a sunken belly. But I put a lot of food in these guys, a lot of time and a lot of effort into getting these guys as healthy as I can. And we probably got, I don't know, maybe a 100 of those guys in there or so. Maybe more. I don't know. But we even got some small ones in there. And I still got this little, look at that. Look at that little ram. That's a female. A little electric blue ram. Got that in there. Just swimming around with, <laughs> with these guys. And we got some super red plecos in here too. There's the male sitting in the cave right there. And then we got that female right there. And then there's another female in here. But I'm not sure where she is. But she's huge. She's bigger than that girl. So that's what we got going on up there. I got a lot of I got a lot of updates that, that's coming too, but I'm just gonna give y'all just a quick run through, which it really ain't quick, but it's quick enough. A quick run through of all the fish I got down here right now. Cause I have a ton. Down here in this tank, look at the color on those fish. These, I think I might have showed these in the video. I don't know. I, I'm not sure if I showed these guys in the video a while ago, but these were those baby Turkana jewels that I had quite a while ago. Not quite a while ago, but like maybe like three or four months ago. 
and they were like baby babies and now they just for some reason they just took off and just exploded you guys look over there we got some little breeding activity going on back there with this guy and that girl over there looking just amazing she might have eggs back there i'm not sure there's so many fish in there i wouldn't even know like but she is like staying back there she is yeah she probably sitting on some eggs and she must have beat this girl up over here because they was just fine so i might have to i don't know I might have to move that girl out of there and put her over with the Nicaraguans. Because those guys are really docile over there. This is actually the first sign of any <laughs> aggression in this tank that I have seen since I had these fish. But, yep, this is the Tucana Jewels. As you guys can see, my, uh, my jungle valley here is not growing as good as it is in the uh, electric blue car tank. And I believe that is because of the sand. So the sand kind of suffocates it a little bit. But as you can see, we do got a whole bunch of new growth over here. We got some new, new growth back there in the back and over there in that corner. So it's growing slowly but surely. All right, so now we're going to start with the 10 gallons and the 40 breeder down there. I had to turn these lights off. But in here we got some guppies. I don't even know what they are. I don't even know what they call it. But we got some guppies in here looking real good. That's the male. And we got one female in there. And they got a bunch of babies just swimming around. So these guys right here actually don't eat their fry, which is absolutely amazing because most guppies, most live bears do eat their fry. But these guys are coexisting with each other, which is awesome. In this 10 gallon, we got baby blood red swordtails. It's a bunch of those guys in there. These guys are kind of slow growers, but I mean, I guess I got nothing but time to wait for them to grow up. I got to keep this this line of fish around and just uh, keep breeding them. Because as you guys can see, like this one right here has the long top fin. And then that one there has the short top fin, which is this one is like the dad. And then that's like the mom. So the dad has the long fin. The mom has the short fin, which I kind of bred them for that. To try to, I bet him for that to try to kind of keep that both, you know, both fins, the high fin and the low fin for different people. Different people like different things. So over here in this 10 gallon, we got a bunch of yellow labs, which I told you guys the yellow labs were down there in that 20 gallon. Yellow lab babies and sulfur head babies. Looking good, growing fast. I'm really running out of tank space down here, guys. I'm really, really limited on tank space. So in here we got baby bichers, baby emissary bichers looking good. These guys are looking good. I imported these guys, and they were they were eating live, and they only eat live. So I have had to kind of resort to feeding these guys live rosy reds just to try to get some food in them so they don't end up passing away because that would be pretty devastating for them to not survive because I didn't want to feed them what they're used to feeding. So, and here we got the parents. And the only reason why I haven't sold these is because the male... I don't know if you guys can see it, but his face is like kind of crooked. So he's an imperfect fish. None of the babies are imperfect. They're all looking good. They're all doing good, but he is imperfect. But these guys, 
I mean, I don't mind having imperfect fish because in a real world, nobody's perfect anyway. And here we got nothing in here. I'm going to show you guys why we don't have anything in there. And here we got a bunch of uh, the red peacock babies. There's probably like 30 or 40 of them in there. In this tank. Nothing exciting going on. Just a bunch of horn work in there. Then in this tank here, this 10 gallon, we got a bunch of more guppy grass and some horn work in here. And we got about 200 coolie loaches in there. Or no, we got 128 coolie loaches in here. So, yeah. That's a lot, but it's not a lot for a 10 gallon because these guys, they don't have a big bottle load at all and they're not even that big. So, uh, plus these, these tanks are just holding tanks. Like I said, I, I, I do all the swaps and stuff and I'm selling fish, so. They won't be in there long. All right, guys. So last but not least, uh, in the middle of the room, we got this 40 breeder down here below these 10 gallon tanks. And there's just a uh, female beta sorority. As you guys, you can see those three harlequin ras boars in there. I didn't even know. I forgot they was even in there. But we got those guys. Just some. Female bettas, you know, nothing spectacular, but they do, they do look good. They got some nice color going on, a lot of personality, and they looking good, guys. They looking real good, actually. All right, guys, so let's go over here to the last section of the fish room. In this tank, we got... Some more jungle valve. As you guys can see, jungle valve is uh, my go-to plant. <laughs> I have been successfully growing jungle valve in certain aquariums, and I just kind of stick to what I can grow. I, I don't do nothing more, nothing less. But we got a bunch of ghost knives in here. We got some little guys in here. Look at this little guy right here. He looked like he ain't going to make it, but... He's, he's going to make it. I just turned the lights on down here so I could record a video. It's like 3 o'clock in the morning. And everybody was down here pretty much asleep. But I disturbed the peace like I always do because I'm always checking on these guys. But as you guys can see, I built these little houses right here out of PVC. And I just zip tied these together. These big ones. Which I should have did the same thing over here. Well, I should have did this over here because on this side I use silicone which it's like maybe like four or five different ones right here but I just stacked them all on top of each other to make it all look like one but I did those for the smaller guys and then this is for the bigger guys which is some big ones in there but of course you probably can't see them because they're hiding like always but those are the ghost knives one of my favorite fish in the hobby, ghost knives. These guys are, look at them. Just look at how they swim. And they just got, they got a lot of personality too. I love the ghost knives. All right, let's go down here to the bottom tanks. And here we got a bunch of Krabinsies in here. Um, these guys... Okay, so down here in the bottom tank, we got a bunch of Krabinsies down here, adult size. Uh, these guys are not colored up. I just actually moved these guys from another tank over to this tank. So this is like their second day in here because I've been having to move a lot of fish around just because I'm always getting new fish in. So... Sometimes it causes for me to have to move fish to different aquariums for other fish to, to make room for other fish pretty much. But we got the Krabinsies in here. I won't talk too much about those. Then over here we got 
So over here we got my bicers in here, which these bicers right here have been with me for quite a while. You guys can see these guys are pretty big. They're probably pushing about seven inches right now. And as you guys can see, I got my go-to plant in there again, the jungle valve. But these guys right here, I'm going to move these guys also. So you guys stick around. We're going to move some fish in the next video. Just a little rundown on these guys and a 40 breeder. All right, guys. So in this tank right here, it's another 40 breeder down here on the bottom. I got two CPDs in here, which I'm not sure the camera will even pick this little thing up. Let's see. There we go. So I got two CPDs in here. I'm trying to breed them. So this bowl over here, I put some moss in there. Usually early in the morning, they'll lay eggs. And that's what that 10 gallon with the, the moss ball, that's why that tank is empty. Because these guys usually lay eggs early in the morning and they like to lay them in the moss. <clears throat> So pretty much, they'll lay them in the moss. I'll pull the bowl out. I'll see if there's any eggs in there. I'll shake the eggs off into that 10-gallon, and then the eggs will just hatch. They don't need to be, uh, they don't need to be in like a egg tumbler or anything like that. And that's pretty much all we got in this tank right now because we are waiting for a small shipment of some other fish. We got a few coolie loaches in here. It's probably like 10 of them in here, which I had these guys in this tank first, and it's so hard to catch them. I had to catch the ones that I can and pretty much move those guys to a, a different tank. But I don't even know if you guys can see those coolie loaches back there, but they are in there. There's one right there. It's probably about 10 or 15 of them in here roaming around and as you guys can see once again well i got the moss i can grow moss too now i got the moss on this little wood right here and then we got our go-to plant in the back the jungle valve all right guys i'm gonna save that 40 breeder there for last but in this tank here we have uh clown loaches in here Small clown loaches, inch and a half, two inches. And then we have these beautiful rainbow fish, Parkinsoni. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right or not, but it's something like that. I'll pop up a picture of those guys. But these guys are looking real good. Rainbow fish are slow growers, so it does take a little time for them to come along and get their actual colors but they live a long time so just keep that in mind whenever you buy a rainbow fish if you guys are in a rainbow fish they take a long time to grow up and a long time to color up but they live a long long time so we got the Parkinsoni rainbow fish in there like I said I pop up a picture and the name so you guys know what they are and we got the clown loaches in here which we got some more clown loaches coming. Can't wait for that. Last but not least, this is one of my favorite aquariums down here. And I really don't know why, but it just, the ecosystem in here is just, it's just perfect. Like I never do a water, I haven't done a water change on this tank in probably like, I don't know. I'm going to say, because this tank was bare bottom, but I just end up putting, ever since I put the gravel in there and I put these plants in there, I haven't done a water change. So it's probably been like four months. I don't even wipe the glass off or anything. No algae, no nothing. This tank is just, it's perfect. I don't know how or why. <clears throat> Maybe I took a, a page out of Father Fish book. I don't know, but. 
these plants right here, I don't even know what these plants are that's up here floating, but those guys are growing good. We got our jungle valve in here also. You see the new runners right there sprouting. But let's talk about the fish. We got, I got a shipment of fish a while ago, and I ordered a bunch of Bose Monte Rainbows. And I lost all of them except for maybe like four Bose Monte Rainbows. So this one of them right here. But this big group of fish is Congo Tetras, and I'm really not trying to get rid of them. To be honest, I don't want to. I don't want to sell the Congo Tetras. And these guys are. I'm just really waiting for them to color up. These guys, they get a nice big size, and these guys get some amazing color on them. So let me back off the tank a little bit. But, yeah, we got the Congo Tetras in there, and we got maybe like four or five Bozmani Rainbows. I don't know if you guys can see them right down here. There's only a few of them in there. It's not, not many, but like I said, the, the Rainbow Fish, they grow slow. It takes them a while to color up, and they live a long time. And we got our brown bristle nose Plecos in here. We got four of them in here. We got two females, two males. And these guys are the parents of all those babies over there in the ple in the baby pleco tank with the baby Kerbenses. So these guys, they spit calico, they spit brown, they spit albino, they spit every combination you can get out of a brown bristle nose. And we got we got look at that little baby Kerbense back there. He just snuck in there. I put like three or four baby crevices in here to see if these guys would be able to survive in here with these bigger guys. And there's another one right there. So these guys are surviving with the big dogs, which I kind of figured they would. But I just had to make sure. Not that I'm going to put the rest of them in there. I just wanted to make sure that they could survive with the big dogs. All right, guys, so I came back to the, the ghost knife tank. I just threw some food in there. This is what I feed them, if y'all are interested in what I feed them. Just a, a sinking carnivore pellet. That's what I feed these guys. I just wanted to get them out so you guys could actually see, like, how big some of these guys are. I got one over here that's different. If you see him, he, he's, a, he's different. Like, he's... He's a whole different color. So I'll probably end up keeping that guy, grow him out until he gets about maybe 8, 10 inches, something like that, and then I'll probably get rid of him. I don't know. Might keep him. You never know. These guys have been kind of gnawing on these plants in here a little bit, so I wouldn't say that these guys are exactly plant safe, but for the most part they are. I mean, the plants are still growing. I just trim down all the plants in here but i want to just come back to this tank and show you guys that the ones that were laying down now they're up they're out eating these two guys right here this guy right here uh they're out eating and stuff so just wanted to come back to that tank and show you guys that all right guys so i do have one thing that i have to say um about the fish people. Um, I hate to say it, but it has to be said because I'm not the only person out here thinking like this. And I'm not the only person that's dealing with the same thing. So I had a lot of people hit me up. I got a lot of people who uh, want to purchase stuff from me and they want to buy fish. But everybody complains about the price of shipping $50 shipping you guys have to understand that if you order fish from Aquahana or a lot of these other places they've been shipping fish for 10 plus years so maybe the cost of their shipping is lower than mine's yes are they showing you guys the fish no 
I walk you guys through, give you guys a rundown, let you see the fish. I feed the fish. That's how I got my name for feeding the fish. Literally, that's what I do. Feed the fish. You guys see my tanks. 99% of my tanks are clean. All my tanks are clean. But, of course, my bare bottom tanks are not always going to be the cleanest because they're bare bottom. And I don't, I'm not running a filter on them. I'm only running sponges on them. If I had a hang on the back filter, that'd be a different story. But, as you guys can see, my main tanks are all clean, all pristine. We got little tannins going on in here just because of the driftwood. Same thing down here with the Oscar tank. Nothing but just tannins. Plus, that's a big bio load to be in that tank. That's why we're going to move those guys into this tank over here. But the price of shipping, $50 flat rate. There, There's no negotiating that because that's just that's what it is. I'm not making anything off of it. So if you guys want anything to ship, I, I just, I'm really just tired of people saying stuff about the, the price of shipping. That's why I have not recorded video. I've been staying to myself. I've been doing nothing but just fish swaps because I can go get a rental car and travel out of town, state to state, and I don't have to ship anything. But I try to, I try to let everybody get the opportunity to get the fish they want nice and healthy. These fish are healthy to A1. I'm treating them. I'm doing everything in my power. Another thing. My snakes. These snakes in the rack right here. The price of shipping for one snake is $100. So I don't want to hear nobody complaining about the price of shipping for 20 fish. $50 if it's one fish. Or if it's 20 fish, $50, okay? That's just that, guys. I'm not trying to be an a-hole. I'm just, I'm just keeping it real with you guys, man, because I got too many people inboxing me on, on my Facebook page, and you guys get to talk to me. It's not like I'm a robot or I'm a computer. That's, I mean, that's why I didn't do the website, but... Now I see why people do the websites. So that way they don't have to interact with people because sometimes people can be a-holes and just get under your skin. So I'm not trying to be an a-hole, but I have to say this. Some of the stuff has to be said, guys. It just has to be said, and that's just, that's just the way things are. Things have to be said. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm the person that's gonna say the things that nobody else is gonna say, guys. I'm sorry, but that's just me, and I'm not gonna change that for anybody. But if you guys enjoyed this video, I know I haven't seen you guys. I'm looking a little rough, which is okay, cause this is just it's a part of life, guys. I don't have to look perfect for the camera, um, but. Oh, also, I want to give a big shout out to everybody who came to the fish swap here in the Quad Cities. All right, guys. So this video is going to drop March 6th, which is a Friday. And the swap was a week ago from Friday. I don't even remember the date. Don't ask me. I don't, I don't remember. Something like that. But big shout out to everybody who came out. Man, there was over 2,000 people there. Shout out to all the vendors, man. Shout out to everybody who made this this thing possible. And uh, we had a great turnout. Everybody enjoyed themselves, man. We had a lot of fun. A lot of people showed up. A lot of people knew who I was. Uh, sorry if I don't remember everybody's names or faces because I do run into a lot of people. And I guess that's just... A part of the hobby, guys. I, I, I run into a lot of people who know me. I don't treat them no different, but I don't know who you guys are, and I don't mean for it to be like that. So don't forget to follow me over on my Facebook page, Mr. Feed the Fish. Don't forget to smash the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you already 
are not subscribed to this channel. I know this channel has been down, but we back, we back, we back, and we live, and we're going to keep this thing going. I got to get back into the swing of things, just uh, recording. I don't have nobody to record also. That's another big thing when it comes to recording. I hate holding the camera. I hate holding the camera. Uh, Boss of Quarks, if you watching, man, get your butt over here and hold this camera for me, bro. I need you. <laughs> I need you over here recording, man, and I would do the same thing for you, but I'm going to go ahead and get out of here, guys, so until next time, remember, always feed the fish. Holla.